mayfly. The mayfly is one of the most important sources of food in a trout's diet, so you as an angler and fly tire will benefit immensely from Renee's vast knowledge. Renee and Bonnie, his wife and partner for 28 years, created the House of Harrop 26 years ago, creating flies for trout anglers throughout the world. Now two of their children, Leslie and Shane, are also a part of the business, helping to keep up with the demand. He also has licensed Mackenzie Flies to manufacture some of his patterns to increase production of his unique designs. Though studying and creating new fly patterns occupy a vast amount of Renee's time, he still finds space in his busy schedule to get away to his drawing table to create beautiful and amazingly lifelike images of the stream. When we made this show, it was November, but the day was bright and it didn't take too much persuasion to get Renee and Bonnie out on the river for a few hours. After all, he said, this is my research lab, and where would we be without research? Renee and Bonnie's research led them to discover the unique properties of CDC feathers and to use them in their creations of remarkably lifelike fly patterns. In this video, Renee will focus on the three stages of the mayfly, plus introduce you to transitional patterns that work between stages. As fishing pressure increases, along with catch and release, trout get harder to fool, so anglers need more and better patterns to present. Now here's Renee. The first fly is a transitional nymph. Each fly will be preceded by a panel that lists the materials you'll need for the fly. And we begin the process by starting the, the thread onto the hook, wrapping the thread along the hook shank. We're building a foundation here, and this has a it has a function. We're not just uh, wasting turns. What we're trying to do is to establish a foundation for what we put on top of this. This is going to help us keep the the uh, material from sliding around, it's going to make a more durable fly. Okay. Now this is turkey hackle. This is made actually synthetically through a process where, by where the body feathers of a, of a turkey are, uh, are marked, modeled. In fact, if I hold this up, you can see that it has a very natural broken appearance that works very well for many of the, uh, the purposes that we typically have used grouse, grouse feathers or uh, maybe duck feathers. I like it a lot because it has very even tips and we can we can eliminate a lot of struggle. Now as a rule of thumb for nymphs I like to use a about a three-quarter length on our tail. So we'll tie that in to the point just about directly over the barb of the hook. Secure it well with thread. Trim the butts. This is a pale morning dun. It's a very common, common mayfly in, in most western waters, and a lot, of, a lot of fishermen are familiar with it. And this also addresses a situation that, that we encounter quite frequently with this hatch, and because the hatch lasts for such a long time, we find fish become very familiar with it. Now, this is a, this is a nice, coarse dubbing with some reflective quality into it, uh, added to it, that we, uh, we like to, uh, to use for our nymph patterns. We also want to have a rib. This is copper wire. This will add a little bit of extra flash and also add a little weight to the area that we want to have some weight in. Okay, once we block that into place, 